If you're planning on buying any cards from TCG Player, make sure you use our affiliate link right here in the description of our video to help support the channel. It's the best way to do it and it's free. Check out Potan Store. It's a fantastic website with instant email delivery on all the code cards you could possibly want for PTCGO. And if you use Tailmon code when you're checking out, you get 5% off your final purchase. For the European players, Millibuds Gaming has everything from collectibles to all the latest cards from the latest sets, Cosmic Eclipse, Hidden Fates, and everything from Sun and Moon. Don't forget to check it out and use Tailwind code when checking out in order to get 5% off your final purchase. Welcome back everyone, welcome back to another day of Road to TG Worlds 2020 if you're live watching on Twitch, obviously it's not another day. <laughs> But um, thanks so much for hanging out today. Remember, after uh, we finish with this deck, I will be giving out a um, voucher for Potent Store where you can get $10 off any purchase you make there. And um, it also combines with the Tailmon 5% off code. So it's a great way to let them know that you appreciate that they support the channel the way they do. So. This is our next super spicy deck, yeah, which did well in Japan actually. This is based off of a Japanese um, list, so it's really, really cool. Um, they do have Sword and Shield, so Nest Ball should be Quick Wall, or ideally would be Quick Wall. But um, yeah, so the idea behind this deck is it, well, it revolves around Mimikyu Gengar, Dust Retronet, and Milotic. So we have Gengar and Mimikyu to use Whorehouse GX if you want second. Stop your opponent from doing absolutely anything, and then all at the same time you use. Um, well, you're gonna set up energies in the discard pile so you can use Milotix Energy Grace, which knocks itself out and allows you to attach three basic energy cards from your discard pile to one of your Pokemon, excluding Pokemon EX. Thankfully, we are playing Pokemon GX, not Pokemon EX, so that allows us to power up Tron and Dustworm in one turn, and by like knocking out our own Milotic, we are behind in prizes. So that means we get to use Ace Trainer, put our opponent down to three cards, and we can then use Nightwatch to shuffle in two random cards from their hand. So they will begin their turn with a single card in hand. And if you play your cards right, and if the Ditto decides to show up, then you can even evolve into Floets and use Flower Picking, where you can choose a card from your opponent's hand and shuffle it back into your deck, potentially having them start their turn with zero cards in their hand. We accomplish this by using a lot of thinning tool cards in Bile Compressor, the Dynan Shaman to draw a bunch of cards. If this was Quick Ball, then the deck would be so much better because you could, you would have access to eight different cards in order to search for Shaman or Tetene. Right now we only have six with the Pokecom and Hildrawl, but it's not the end of the world. So it'll be easier to see this deck in action, right? So as long as we don't play against something that's dark, we should be good. Yeah, we should be good. And sometimes you can just like aggro dark out of the game if they dead draw off of your um, your night watch. So we'll have to see, we'll have to see what happens. Right now, it doesn't seem like we're up against anything dark. So that is always good. <clears throat> that is always good. <coughs> I do agree that Ace Trainer is underrated, Nader Fryan, I actually think People definitely didn't appreciate the card chunk Giratina decks enough before the bans. Like even without the possibility to use um, the amulet to knock out Jirachis and whatnot, I definitely think um, like if I had gone to any of those experiments, I'm pretty sure I or I'm very confident I would have played one of the like I would have played Garchom Giratina with Miss Magis and expanded for sure. And like surge into Ace Trainer into Mars. But oh well, um, could potentially run a Marshall GX to help with type coverage. I feel like running Mewtwo on Mew would be better for type coverage, um, because Marshall is just so fragile, right? Like, yeah, I mean, you could, but then you also have to discard the Pokemon. You definitely could, right? Um, definitely could. 
Um, okay, so by seeing a Keldeo, this could be ADP-ish, but by seeing Keldeo, we now know that we need a Lola and Grimer for sure in order to guarantee that we deal with whatever my opponent is trying to do. And we have Gladian to access the Lola and Grimer, so that's really nice. So with this first Ultra Ball, I'm going to go ahead and discard the Field Lower and the Psychic. Um, the Mog is indeed priced. The Mog is actually indeed priced. So I think I go for Phoebus. Yeah, because setting up the Phoebus down is so much more important than... Um, it is so much more important than the... Doesn't return it because this guy has to evolve. So we have actually an extra turn to get it down. Um, now we got it. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking we go Dosner Trevenant. We go Computer Search. No, I think we go Gladian actually. And then we hold. So we have a Melodic Prize. We get the Alolan Mog. Nothing else is priced is super impactful. And then I think it just pass. And then depending on what I top deck, I'll decide what I Computer Search for. Though it'll probably be a um, Battle Compressor. Like this way, if I top deck Bile Compressor or Floatstone, I still have um, possibilities to get out of this weird spot. I could also just Computer Search for um, for Shame in EX, right? That could also be a thing. All right, so we see a Nest Ball. This is like a weird expanded ADP, which with the Ultra and Energy, I guess it makes sense in a way. My opponent goes for the Kuzma, that's okay, like, that literally saves me a, um, a Floatstone, so I'm very happy with that. Uh, my opponent is going Triple Kill deal. and Die Falls, I don't know, alright. So this is completely fine by me, if I fall here. If I, okay, so here's the thing. If I computer search, um, I think I'm gonna computer search away these two. And now I think I go for a Shaman. I still need the extra energy to discard pile. Or to just attach it, that's also good. I don't need the mock right now. Oh, this is so bad though. I'm not happy that I am ending my opponent right here. I am definitely not happy about that. Alright, so I'm gonna nest ball for a Phoebus. Well, actually, I guess Tito. Well, no. The Phoebus is fine. I might need double my logic at some point. I guess getting Ditto is also good. I guess that's fine. And then I'll post on this guy. And then... I guess I really do want the my logic, right? I do want to start attacking right away. I think that's correct. Well, an Ace Trainer. Yeah, an Ace Trainer because I have the four BS Seekers. All right, so now I go set up without the trainer's mill because this gives me access to four more cards and I really need the ultra ball here. Any Pokemon would have been fine as well. Doesn't seem like it's going to happen. Nope, it's not going to happen this turn. Oh my gosh. Come on. What the heck? This was so under odds. So, so under odds. Double Trainer's Mail, getting the Pokecom, and not drawing a Poke. It's like, ugh. What the heck? Hello, Maria. Thanks so much for being here. Like, I could have drawn the Melodic, an Ultra Ball, found any Pokemon. Ugh, now we're in a lot of trouble, actually. Oh, well. And my opponent's playing how? We cannot lose to someone who's playing how. Oh, come on. 
Why am I incapable of finding a Pokemon? Or an Ultra Ball or anything? Jeez. Um, okay, I think I'm gonna Field Blower away this. And then I'll, yeah, get rid of the Shamans. And I'll play it on that. And I'll play Anakin. It is really silly though. Okay, so I have my Lodic, right? I do have my Lodic. They just, my opponent's gonna be playing some sort of switching card. I just know it, right? He's 100% going to be playing some sort of switching card. Well, Native Ryan, I could have, right? But finding my Lodic is so much easier than finding one of the few energies that I have left. Yeah, so that's why I chose not to do that. That is actually why I chose not to do that, because my odds of finding my Lodic were so much higher than, a ta than finding an energy. Yeah. Because I wasn't guaranteed to draw an energy. That was the biggest thing. That was, in fact, the biggest thing. Okay, and then I'll just go for Paleman GX. I need my opponent to stick this guy here. Please don't let me lose to someone who's playing how. Oh my god. Okay, so my Lodex ability, it allows you to... Um, yeah, I've lost. Oh, I can't believe I lost to someone playing how. Um, my Lodex ability, when you use it, you give your opponent a prize, it gets knocked out, and then you can choose three energies from the discard pile, three basic energies, and attach them to one of your Pokemon, excluding Pokemon EX. I can't believe I whiffed so badly there. Oh well. I mean, what can you do, right? What can you do? Okay, so we are going second. So now, this time, we really want to be able to pull off the Kengar Mimikyu. Yeah. I'm gonna pull off the Gengar Mimikyu. So yeah, this deck only has six basic energies. That's why I didn't I thought that was the right play, but with the way things worked out. And Voltigan, thank you so much for the follow. I might just draw passes, so we actually have a decent chance to just dunk him here. That energy top deck was fantastic. Um, I think I'll get rid of that, and then I'll get rid of... Uh, uh, uh. What else? I think a compressor is fine. Yeah. It's like Electro GX, exactly. But Electro GX can't attach to GX as my logic can. Okay, so we know my opponent is not in a great spot, right? Ooh, this second Ultra Ball is fantastic. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna play that. We're gonna Ultra Ball away these two for a Shaman. Can my Lodic, it, might, it can attach anywhere. Yeah, last game we attached to the active. All right. So I'm gonna need to draw a flowstone off of this via seeker. So I'll do that. So I'll do that. Like via seeker into an into floatstone. And there it is. Alright. I just I can't one hit KO him unless I use this guy. So I think that's all I'm gonna do. Well I'm gonna bench this. And then I'm gonna use my GX attack. Horror House. So my opponent cannot play anything, right? He can, and as long as there's four trainers there, then we just outright win here. So I'm gonna computer search for the energy, getting rid of those two. Just gonna grab the energy, and my opponent says, well played, well played. So sometimes you can just win with this, right? I'm gonna assume that's one, two, three, four, yeah. Um, sometimes you just win like this, Though it's very, very, very rare. 
Yeah, but the plan here would have been to stop that and then like computer search for another float stone and then use my logic to power up that guy and then use Ace Trainer and then bop him and then leave him with no hand or barely any hand. Yeah, so hopefully we get a game where we can pull it off. We could have pulled it off last game if we had just drawn a Milotic at any point. Or a Pokemon. <laughs> any Pokemon would have been fine too. All right. Snarf, snarf. So I would like to go first. You always want to go first. The Floet becomes Shaman with his hand, so that's pretty nice. We also get to check our prizes in case we need to Gladian for something. And we're up against Hitmanchan. This should be a super, super favorable and easy matchup. So if you're going first, you don't go for a Gengar, my lot. I mean, for a Mimikyu Gengar. Um, because there's no point, you can't use it on turn one. Like, you might use it for late game as a backup attacker. Um, because it's like, if your opponent recovers and finds like Sycamore off of the, the attack, I mean, off of your, um, hand denial, and then they get prizes, and that's where King Army BQ punishes them. Right. Um, okay. So I, I, it looks like I will have to glide in for the mock, which is prized again. It's not like, I'm not going to do it this turn, but I will need to save the glide in for mock. Um, all right, so if I get rid, oh, I have the Seeker in hand, okay. We can get rid of that and the N, and then I can N. I don't mind that Ditto going down, it'll actually be useful. Like, I just need Mock for potential, um, potential Hoopa promotions or Keldeo GX or something like that. All right, now we're fully set up. You know, with this energy, as long as the Ditto goes down, which I fully expected to, we are in a great spot. And very low, Diego and Pratissimo, Happy New Year to you too, guys. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so, so much for being here. Happy New Year to you too. All right, so we are in a fantastic spot here. We have the combo, the broken combo. You've seen a lot of Hitman dolls. Yep. Oh, the Woe Fed. No. <laughs> oh my gosh, the Woe Fed. Well, the Woe Fed puts a dent in our plans. The Woe Fed means we need Guzma to be able to pull this off. Hello Alex, happy new year to you too. <laughs> happy new year to you too. Okay, I mean we have so much resistance that we'll probably be fine just manually attaching, but now finding the energies is not gonna be super easy. Um all right, so I'm gonna change smell. Oh the counter catcher, perfect. That's even better than Kuzma actually. <laughs> Um, and I'm gonna go after the Oranguru, because Oranguru is great recovery for the Night Watch, right? And then we'll do this. That counter catcher was very fortunate for us. Very, very fortunate. Go ahead and evolve, and then we go... Energy Grace before I Ace Trainer. I don't want to give my opponent an extra card after I have Ace Trainered him. Right, I definitely don't want to do that. And there we go. Um, like, I wasn't guaranteed to find the Alolan mock. Well, I definitely won't find the Alolan mock, actually. So, now we just go Night Watch, and this is fantastic. Um, there's no merit in playing Dimension Valley, because Dimension Valley reduces your attack cost by colorless. And Nightwatch costs three psychics, and there we go. <laughs> Nightwatch costs three psychics, so it wouldn't help you, actually. It would not help you. 
you know it would help you in pulling off your gx attack for two energies but that's not usually something you struggle with it also or something like if you're gonna use the gx attack you probably already bought my logic anyways um and it doesn't help gengar mimikyu either so i don't think it's worthy um all right so we're up against what you can assume to be Rowlet eggs that could be problematic right that could be problematic the item lock is super super annoying always to deal with um and this isn't a great hand either um though i guess poltergeist is probably very good against them actually yeah poltergeist is actually probably really good the issue is the Valbloom, right? I don't... Well, I do have a way to attack the Valbloom, I guess. I actually do have a way to attack the Valbloom. Oh, my opponent just draw passes, all right. And I top deck the computer search, which is fantastic. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. So, get rid of the N. And then, I don't wanna get rid of energies, actually. I'll just get rid of these two, I think. Everything else is potentially useful. Yeah. And then I'll go Nest Ball for a Ditto. That way I have flexibility. I will Field Blower. I will Computer Search for a Psychic Energy. I want to guarantee that. And I'll do that, and then I GX. Starting this guy is super lucky as well. Um, otherwise, I would have like nest bolt for this guy, and then hope to find a float stone. And I feel like I'm just gonna horror house. I don't need to do anything else. My opponent will just draw pass, probably. Yeah, sweet scent. Isn't there a notice that like paralyzes maybe? And as long as he has two trainers, we win, right? Well, he has two trainers, we win. Is that going to be the case? Come on, energy. Poltergeists. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Poor Oddish. <laughs> poor, poor Oddish. I mean, I feel like going first and expanded, the chance of that happening are not high to where um, you should be able to count on this, but you never know, right? Like getting a win off of a dunk like this. And our regional, it definitely puts you in a very, a very comfortable spot. That's for sure. A very comfortable spot. All right. So. So so so. He had bridge in hand. Yeah, but he like horror house says they can't play anything. Yeah, they cannot play a single card from their hand. Okay, pretty decent, unless you're up against Turbo Dark, which I didn't realize. Yeah, well, I end him, Ryan. I end him, so he didn't have the Bridget before I end him. Okay, this is some sort of Double Dragon Psychic deck. Yeah, like the hand you saw, the hand you saw um, was after I end him. Okay, Lele start. Um, what a fantastic hand right here. Definitely grabbing that. Definitely benching this. Definitely nest balling for that guy. And then we will go Ultra Wall. We don't need to attach energies. That's the best part about this deck, that you don't have to attach energies. Because then just my Lotte gets them back. And I'll do this, and then hopefully we don't dead draw off of this my Lotte. I mean, off of this Shaman. And we kind of do. We actually kind of do. There's no Shaman prize. There is an Ultra Bowl prize, so Gladian for Ultra Bowl is going to be my play. So I'll get rid of the two energies and the Ace Trainer to have access to that. And then I'll definitely Gladian for the Ultra Wall. Um, could just be the Denny as well. Could be. 
Pokecom. I actually like Pokecom a little better. Pokecom is actually better. So Gladion becomes draw, which is great. And I'll just flowstone this guy and the Ditto. Because why not? And then we'll set up for five more cards. <clears throat> Alright. And we get an energy, which we don't even need. We have Ultra Roll for Milotic. We have VS Eager into the Ace Trainer. So we are in a fantastic spot. We attach energy. Like, Milotic doesn't let you attach to different Pokemon. It doesn't let you rearrange where you want the energy. So there's no point in attaching energy for turn. Leaving this energy for... The Ultra Ball is actually pretty good for a potential second Milotic. Okay, so we're up against Ultra Necrozma. A little, a little scared, not gonna lie, a little scared. Mm. Okay, but my opponent doesn't even have anything all right so definitely doing this definitely ultraballing the muck no i think the shaman is fine ultra all the energy for my logic and then i'm gonna evolve the feedback i mean the ditto sorry the ditto yeah that way if at any point I want to, like, if I evolve into Mog and then I evolve into a second Milotic, I can. But if I evolve into Mog, then the Ditto is useless. And this is going to be pretty sad for my opponent, that's for sure. I'm going to Ace Trainer him down to three, then we're going to attack him down to zero card, well, down to one card. I feel like I will evolve. I don't feel like I'm going to need much afterwards, and I only have one Shaman left anyways. And this hand is just beautiful. <clears throat> this hand is just absolutely beautiful. I can even start powering up this guy, which is insane. Um, I will do this, right, to get rid of excess cards like these and these. And then we just KO the... Well, no, we don't KO the Lily. We Nightwatch. We don't have damage modifier, so we can never KO Lily, but that's fine. N and Floatstone. My boy starts his turn two with two cards. And gets the Via Seeker for Sycamore. I mean, it's not the end of the world. Oh, you know what? It's a good thing Chip Chip got the band indeed. The energy I just attached to the bench, dude, it should have gone to the active. I forgot that this guy discards energy. That's bad. That is definitely bad news. And it's not looking likely that he'll be able to attack anyways. Like now, I don't even need to ace trainer. That is great. Um, this is a fantastic top deck. Getting rid of the stadium means less chance of him attacking me next turn. I'll keep the computer search for potential search of energies afterwards. Right, Iris and Via Seeker. Ooh, Iris, interesting. And then we'll take our two prizes. Um, you can't really be careful with your item cards with this deck. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I mean, that's still not a knockout of the Trash Lanch. Oh, come on. That's twice my opponent has been able to do this. He needs Stadium and Double Dragon. Does he get that off of N to 5? Energy Lodo. I mean, wait, what? Oh, I turned it off myself. Oops. Oh, I should not have evolved this guy. Oops. I mean, it should be fine. Oh, no, this is not great, Pablo. This is actually not great. <clears> hmm. <throat> What's my plan here? Ugh. This mock is costing me. 
Do I pale moon here? I feel like I pale moon. How does this have two retreat cards and not three? Oh, that was so silly though. The Alolan, I did not even realize. Oof, this guy's scary now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12. Okay. So this is very scary. Well, we get a prize, that's not bad. And I can go after this guy whilst a strain ring. So that's pretty good. And I get now extra energies. Yeah, that was my bad for attaching here and not to the active. Just probably banging you to evolve the grinder. Yep, that's true. <laughs> okay, so N to one would be even stronger than a strainer. Um, it's not quite going to happen. Like, I'm past one, two, three, four, five, six, and eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I'm actually not past the threshold. Thirteen. All right. <clears throat> So starting the turn with two cards, I mean, he's, he needs Guzma energy, right? In order to win. If I need Guzma and energy. It's much better than just energy though, after I get pummeled by that guy. Two mysterious treasures. Will my opponent finally dead draw or will he be able to recover for a third time in a row? No, he simply passes, all right. So now we get to Night Watch. Zero cards in hand. Can my opponent do it? Can my opponent top deck the like? I don't think he can top deck anything now. He would need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Oh yeah, he can. He needs to top deck Sycamore into Garb plus Energy. And to one doesn't do it. He can't get the two cards he needs off of one card. <sighs> that was close. <laughs> Energy Lodo fails it and passes. All right, Night Watch. Evolving this was very silly. <laughs> Evolving this was actually very silly. I mean, I saw Lele and I was like, well, I probably should tur turn up abilities. So that, like, that recovery option was not there. But then it turns out that um, I helped him. <laughs> I helped him by setting up mock, and I also helped him by um, <coughs> I helped him by not attaching energy to my active person. His top decks were pretty good. I mean, we don't know if they were top decks or if he kept the cards, but the chances of him keeping those cards were also pretty low, right? Pretty, pretty low. All right, expanded is wild indeed. Mr. Riley Klein. Um, we're pretty much dead with this hand, unless we top deck like Compressor or Ultra Wolf, we are definitely dead. And we're up against a dark deck, so we are definitely dead. I'm not even gonna bother. There's no point, <laughs> there's no point. With that start, I'm not gonna defend myself. Right? I am not going to defend myself. I need the perfect top deck and then I need like no reason to waste time with that. No need to waste time with that. Alright. I like this deck because it's so annoying to play against. Like if you want to troll people on the ladder, this is the deck to play. I just I don't think I don't think it's a viable deck moving forward because of all the dark, right? Because of all the dark. Okay, so we are going first, which is nice. We, I think it is another Ultra Necrozma deck. We mulligan. I think my opponent, yeah, we mulligan as well. We mulligan twice, in fact. Uh, okay, so this is actually Reshram Zekrom. I pulled a, like in some of my practice games, I pulled a um, a 6 to 1 price comeback using this deck against that deck. 
So we'll see if that ends up working out that way. All right. All right, we are going first, but that's not the time to start this guy. How many times did I actually go again? Okay, so that Flowstone is a very nice card to get. We're going to Nest Roll for the Feebas. And then I don't think I'm going to need Field Blower, really. Nothing too impactful price that I can see. One Ace Trainer, not the biggest of deals. One Energy, that could be a big deal. Alright, so I feel like I get rid of three energies off of this. I think that's correct. And then I'll go Ultra Wall away these two for Shaman. Well... Yeah, setup for six is better than data change for six because data change is always for six, whereas setup is not always for six. Well, all right, I would like to draw six cards. Okay, not bad, not bad. Not bad at all. This almost guarantees. Okay, I'm gonna Gladian. And then I'm gonna grab a Pokemon. That way, I have the thing established. Right? I have the thing established. Alright. And then, I honestly think I just pass here. If he knocks this guy out, he knocks it out. He needs a crazy turn to do so, though. It's a crazy turn to do so. Cherish Ball, Reshram. Welders. Okay, so that's very underwhelming for that deck in particular, because you really want to double dragon onto that. I don't think Welder is a good play in that particular deck. I do have to be very careful with the GX attack though. <laughs> um, so that's something to consider. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I am going to computer search these two. Yeah, okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to battle compressor away not so useful cards like this, getting our Mimikyu. <clears throat> like the Ace Trainer, so I have a chance of getting it through via Seeker. And another compressor. And then this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to come here to search for the Shaman. Militic idea could maybe work with Reshram. Yeah, like <clears throat> Militic applies to every tag team, basically, I would say. Like you can generally run my Logic with any tag team and you'll be in a, in that very sweet spot. Um... Okay, so I really don't want to end. So do I discard these two and then set up again? Yeah. I'm being very greedy, but I really want the Fia Seeker this turn. Like this Ultra Ball just guarantees I have my Ludic, so that's really nice. Set up. This deck is super greedy. <laughs> super, super greedy. Okay, so I'm not going to be able to Unless I hit that Via Seeker. I mean, unless I hit that Trainer's Mail. Okay, I need a Via Seeker. I have three, I have 18 cards, so odds are not with me, but I still get lucky and pull it off. So we will appreciate that. Awesome. Energy Grace, three energies onto this person. <clears throat> Bench this other person, Ace Trainer down to three, and then night watch into one card for my opponent I like now i'm not scared of um the crossbreak gx 
as long as I don't like overdo it. Like I'm applying so much pressure that he should not be able to pull that off at any point. I'm an ace trainer, and then I retreat, and then I go boop, and then wow, I can't even counter catcher and <laughs> just start attacking that guy. That is insanely good. I know I have an energy prize, so if I want to power up something else, I need my logic. Anyways, <clears throat> I'm having this for potential retreating. Well, I have floatstone. Uh, yeah, let's bring this to as well. Do I want Ditto? Yeah, in case Feebas goes down for whatever reason. It's fine. And then Night Watch. I could Pale Moon, but I feel like giving my opponent less cards is almost the same. <clears throat> if he gets a knockout off of this one two card hand, that would be insane. That would actually be pretty insane. Touches fire and uses Fabled Flare Bolts for 90 damage. And now my opponent has a zero card hand and there's a victory. So, <clears throat> like, <laughs> if you dodge dark. This is the deck to play, I think. But with so much dark in the field, it's just, it's not great. Um, because like the turbo versions, they're not gonna be, like as long as they have like two Zora Greninjas with two energy siege, then you're already really, really, really far behind. You're not one hit killing them, you're like, the matchup is so bad, I don't think there's any way to actually fix it, per se, you know? I don't think there's actually any way to fix it. Um, but anyways, that will be all from me today. Um, two decks as usual. I do hope, I do expect to be uh, um, streaming maybe tomorrow, though it does look like I have a very busy day tomorrow, but Friday. Like, there's no humanly possible way I do not stream on Friday. So I should be streaming for quite a long time on Friday, maybe even VGC as well. So thank you to everyone who has come over to the stream to celebrate the new year. Happy new year to all of you your, if you are watching on YouTube. Um, don't forget to leave a like, it really helps out the channel. Um, Nicholas, I will be back to standard at some point, but right now I need to focus on expanded for Dallas. Um, and standard feels a little stale right now. Um, we're waiting on Sword and Shield and whatnot. Um, but yeah, that will be all for me. Thank you so much for watching. And actually, oh, I need to give out the other $10 voucher for Potan Store. So let me do that. Yeah, I hope you guys trust me that I generate the number and everything correctly. So give me one second. There are 22 of you now. So. The number is 13. So the 13th person in the chat is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I berserk. I berserk. Are you there? I will message you your $10 voucher code for Poton Store, which once again you can use combined with the table one code to get even more value out of the voucher um big tournament in 10 days standard euro nicolas i know um bocom regionals i mean adp mu3 malamar i think those are my three favorite decks right now in standard um definitely would recommend one of those for your tournament um adp is my personal favorite that's for sure um, but yeah, I'll be messaging Iversert. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to leave a like and I will see you on Friday for our next stream in this 2020 year. Thank you so much and until next time. Bye-bye.